It's been a, a, a long road for Regeneron. It's been 25 years now. Correct. Yeah. Correct. How did you keep things going when right. initially a lot of the drugs didn't work? I'm glad you brought that up, frankly, because now some people treat us like we're an overnight success. And, you know, an overnight success, 25 years of overnights is not quite an overnight success. Mm -hmm. it, it is a long process. But I think that we recognize that, that there are no short shortcuts in this business. It takes a long time to actually discover something in the labs, develop it, make it, test it, get it approved, and actually so that it can and sell it so that patients can actually benefit. There's, that, there's no instant gratification in our business. It's not like you can write some software code and overnight somebody will buy your, the latest and greatest app because it does something instantly. This takes years and years and years of hard work and, and, and sometimes you go down some blind alleys. But we always believed that we could succeed uh, if we could get together the group of people that we assembled and bring the talent to bear on important biological and medical problems keep the resources going by scratching and clawing and doing whatever it took to, to, to get the resources. It was just a matter of time and not uh, sort of to be uh, wiped out before uh, the, our time came. Part of not being wiped out before your time came is dealing with Wall Street. Right. Um, you've said that Wall Street can have an iceberg problem, that they only see the tip of the iceberg and not the stuff that is going on beneath. Investors um, they like to simplify their investments. Um, this is the company that's going to come up with a drug for asthma. This is the company that's going to come up a, with a drug for muscular dystrophy. This is the drug company that's got hepatitis. And they do like to simplify um, because it's easier for them to do all their analyses. Um, so they come up with this distortion of suggesting that you should focus on one thing. But the truth of the matter is that's very bad advice, and George knew that, and I knew that, that we couldn't focus on one thing because the odds, no matter how good you are, are always against you. Now, if you're an investor and you've got a portfolio of things you can focus on, that's great. Have each company focus on one thing, it simplifies it, and I'll weed out the ones that don't make it. But if you're a company and you focus on one thing, you're pretty well cooked if that one thing doesn't make it. And so we never wanted to take that chance, or, 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 or I hope to think that we were never arrogant enough to think that everything and each thing in order that we worked on would be successful. We knew that this was a risky business, but we knew, therefore, we, ha we really did have to be able to take a lot of different approaches, and we also had to be investing in technology uh, uh, for the future. Now, one thing that's allowed you to keep all these projects going this whole time has been you, I mean, you're an MD, PhD, but you've also turned out to be quite a, a deal maker. Yeah. One of the, I'd say, one of the better deal makers in biotech. And these R&D deals. I mean, you got, you got money back in addition to getting the rights to Ilya back. Right. I mean, yeah. that's got to be one of the great uh, industry negotiating successes. You know, I, I think that the, the people say that, and I, and I appreciate the compliment, but. Our view on deals that makes our deals better is that when we negotiate them, we actually care what happens five or ten years down the road when there's time to divide up the profits. A lot of people make a deal and they want to know what's it going to do to my stock this week, maybe next month, how am I going to finance even next year's, and, and they're willing to, to mortgage their future for the short-term survival sometimes or success. We were never willing to do that. We took the view, damn it, this is a hard business, and if we've got great advances, we're just not going to give them to, to make us survive for a, a week or a year. We want to build a business uh, for decades. And so we had to care what happened at the back end. That's why the signature deal that we always did was to make sure that we got 50% of the profits um, on any of the products that uh, we put into these deals. Uh, that's almost was unprecedented, and I think that was a Regeneron signature that many people tried to emulate. Not everybody was able to do that successfully. But if, if what was our secret, it was, pretty, it was pretty simple. We believed in what we were doing, and we were unwilling just to give it away because we knew at the end of the day, these companies we were partnered with, they needed these things. Mind you, the best deals are the win-win deals. Our Sanofi deal, I think, is a win-win deal. They needed to be uh, advanced their biotechnology pipeline. We needed to have resources and global reach and certain capabilities in the marketplace that we didn't have and financial resources bring to bear on our pipeline. And it's pretty exciting that you know, now we've got something that uh, both companies are benefiting from. I mean, I always say that you can tell whether a company is rotten uh, by the following little scenario. If, if George and I are in the office and we're arguing about something, which we do all the time, and somebody comes to the uh, door 
and two people show up and they knock on the office door and they want to barge in with, with information. And one of them is waving last month's sales of ILEA in the latest country that we've launched in. And the other one is wa waving an experimental result that doesn't have a chance in the world of selling, of leading to a product for at least a dozen years. If we're not equally excited about both of those, or perhaps even more excited about the long term, then the company's rotten, and I think that's what happens in our industry. Companies rot, they do rot at the top, mm -hmm. um, and people don't have a long-term view. We're looking out five and 10 years, we're under some new initiatives now that won't make a difference for at least a decade, but we see we gotta, we've gotta start and we gotta do it now.